For decades, fan casters have accurately predicted some of the television's best casting decisions. From superheroes to fantasy book scene stealers, these characters have been enhanced by their connection to fans who desired them to be paired with the ideal actor. Still, who are these fan-made cast members, and how do they connect to the fan casting role? Stay tuned as we run down a list of fan cast members that no one can deny. First, Jared Padalecki as Nightwing. Nightwing's casting is imminent as the DC Extended Universe seeks to broaden its horizons. There are rumors that the character will appear in the next Batman film, which will depict a much darker version of Gotham City. Nightwing was formerly known as Robin before leaving Gotham City to pursue his own solo crime-fighting career in another city. Because Ben Affleck's Batman is in his mid to late 30s, the casting of Jared Padalecki, who was 35 at the time of writing, would be ideal, because Nightwing would be shown to be a more mature hero, capable of being a protector in his own right. Jared Padalecki, who plays Sam Wynn Winchester in Supernatural, as a reluctant hero, could do something interesting here as well. At number two, David Tennant as the Riddler. When Jim Carrey played the Riddler in Batman Forever, the character seemed like a cross between the Joker and that weird cousin you avoid at family dinners. Carrey never seemed to know what he wanted to do, and the fans needed a Riddler who could be whimsical yet calculating. David Tennant would be ideal for the role. As the 10th Doctor in Doctor Who, we saw him play someone who made the most of every bad situation and used his wits to overcome it, while in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, he was superb in portraying the maniacal Barty Crouch. Fellow Whovians would flock to the movies to see him in action, and there is no doubt he would play the Riddler with patience and without going overboard. As we progress, we have Brian Cranston as Lex Luthor and Rachel Weiss as She-Hulk. The image of Brian is one where you catch a glimpse and realize it's something you've been missing in your life. The Lex Luthers we've seen on screen so far haven't felt authentic to the character from the comics. In the 1970s Superman films, he was rather hammy, whereas in Superman Returns, he was like a boy who was angry for no reason. Then there's Jesse Eisenberg, who played the worst version of Luther in Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice. Cranston is superb in such a role, as seen in Breaking Bad, where he may appear unassuming, but is plotting a large diabolical plan in the back of his mind. It's not difficult to imagine him up against Henry Cavill Superman. On the other hand, Rachel Weiss is one of those actresses who would never be considered for the role of a superhero. She came the closest in The Mummy and The Mummy Returns. With the actress approaching her 50s, we're unlikely to see her as a superhero again, which is a shame because this fantastic Photoshop should excite any fan. With the Marvel Cinematic Universe undergoing a major transformation following Avengers 4, speculation for a female-led superhero film is rife, and She-Hulk should be one of the leading names. We've seen the character in animation, but if Rachel Weisz takes on the role, she set a very high standard. Following that, David Boreanaz as Batman. A Batwoman TV series is now a foregone conclusion so that Batman could make an appearance. If so, no one does it better than Angel's David Boreanaz, the network's original brooding superhero. Since Angel was canceled, the actor has had a lot of success. He has appeared in Bones and, more recently, SEAL Team. He may not have the time to commit to a major supporting actor role, but the opportunity to play the Bat may tempt him. If Batwoman rejects the Caped Crusader, there's another show with a Batman-shaped hole. Titans can't go an episode without making a passing reference to the character. The Batman in that series is tougher than in previous appearances. A chance to play a meteor dramatic role might entice him to don the cowl. Next, Ava Green as female Loki. The first television series announced by Disney for its upcoming streaming service features Loki, one of its most famous supervillains. This was a surprise given that Thanos brutally murdered him in Infinity War. The series could be a prequel or a Coulson style revival of the character. Whatever the case, they're going to need a lot of material. While Tom Hiddleston is best known for playing Loki, the character has undergone some major transformations from time to time. The character's brief but memorable stint as a woman is the most notable alternative version. If they decide to go in that direction, Casino Royale actress Ava Green is the perfect replacement for Hiddleston. She's made a career playing mysterious dark-haired women with dubious morals. Nothing screams Loki more than that. Moving on, Peter Capaldi as the Doctor. Doctor Who is the most popular fan cast series ever created. The lead character is recast every few years, and the show is effectively rebooted. This sparks a lot of speculation, as well as poorly photoshopped images of British character actors in bow ties. For several years, when someone was asked who would make a good Doctor, one name was Peter Capaldi. Capaldi rose to prominence in the thick of it as the foul-mouthed Malcolm Tucker. His intensity made him the ideal choice for the role of the Doctor. 
When it came time to cast the 12th Doctor, Capaldi was given the opportunity. Fans got to enjoy Capaldi's darker take on the character for years. Jodie Whittaker is killing it as the character right now, but his memorable performance will not be forgotten. Following that, Jensen Ackles as Green Lantern and Peter Dinklage as Tyrion Lannister. For years, the Arrowverse has toyed with introducing Hal Jordan into their universe. There have been numerous references to Ferris Air and other Green Lantern mythos elements. If the character is ever introduced in the universe, there is only one actor who should play him, Jensen Ackles. Ackles is best known for his portrayal of Dean Winchester in the long-running horror drama Supernatural. Aside from that, he played Jason Teague in Smallville. Former CW actors and actors from DC television shows are frequently cast in the Arrowverse. Jensen Ackles embodies both. He'll need a place to stay once Supernatural is no longer on the air. There is no better place to be than the CW's other juggernaut. On the other hand, Tyrion Lannister is one of the most memorable and iconic characters from the first Game of Thrones novel. While there were numerous fan casting suggestions for other cast members, only one actor fit the bill for Tyrion. Of course, that actor was Peter Dinklage. Dinklage established himself as a highly versatile dwarf actor in several television series and films. Several of these performances were preoccupied with his small stature. On the other hand, many of them demonstrated how talented the actor was in his own right. Fans and executives agreed that Dinklage was the right man for the job when it came to casting Tyrion. Next up, Tamura Morrison as Boba Fett and John Bernthal as the Punisher. If you haven't heard, Disney's new Star Wars TV series is about to change the game. The series, directed by Jon Favreau, will center on the Mandalorian race from Star Wars mythology. While Game of Thrones' Pedro Pascal has been cast as the lead, one Mandalorian has yet to be cast, Boba Fett, the most well-known Mandalorian. It would be fantastic if he made a television appearance. While it would be easy for them to cast a big-name actor for the potential role, it would be fantastic if they stuck with Tamura Morrison as Jango Fett. As Boba is a clone of his father, it stands to reason that the same actor would be suitable. Moving on to John Bernthal, his career has been The Walking Dead's ultimate success story. He's worked with Martin Scorsese, Edgar Wright, and several other movie stars since his brief stint as Shane. That's not to say he forgot about his television roots. Bernthal and Netflix fulfilled fans' dreams when they announced that he would play Frank Castle in the second season of Daredevil. He eventually got his show. The show will begin its second, possibly final, season next year. Frank's journey may have been cut short by Netflix's purge of Marvel properties, but no one can deny that he embodied the character better than anyone else. Moving on, Benedict Cumberbatch as Martian Manhunter and John Hamm as Cable. Those who have watched the Justice League animated TV series know John Johns' demeanor. He has a troubled past and is a very soft-spoken individual. He is also extremely powerful, and Superman has admitted that he considers John to be stronger than him because Johns is a powerful telepath. Suffice it to say, he has a certain aura about him. This aura of mystery makes Benedict Cumberbatch the ideal choice to play him. With the Justice League sequel unlikely to arrive soon, Benedict's Doctor Strange days may be over by the time Martian Manhunter's debut arrives in theaters. Many people have switched from Marvel to DC, and this would be one of the best times to do so. On the other hand, it's a wonder John Hamm has never been seen as a superhero. As seen in Mad Men, the guy has a lot of charisma and isn't too bad looking either. It's unfortunate that he's approaching his 50s, which means his superhero casting options are limited, but not with this one. Although Josh Brolin has already been cast in the role, picturing John Hamm in it shows what a missed opportunity it was. As seen in Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt and Bridesmaids, he is hilarious in any comedic role he plays. That is why there is no doubt he would have fit the role of Cable, a buff dude with a sharp sense of humor in Deadpool 2. Finally, Army Hammer as Shazam. Zachary Levi was recently announced as the man for the role of Shazam in 2019. The film will introduce the character to the DC Extended Universe, and he is expected to appear in a future film alongside The Rock, who will play Black Adam. It's a shame the Photoshop work wasn't shown to studio executives, as Army Hammer can easily be seen in the role. He was one of the few bright spots in The Lone Ranger, and a little more muscle would have made him believable as the powerful superhero that a child transforms into by saying the magical word, Shazam. Army has already appeared in The Man from Uncle with Henry Cavill, and Superman is set to appear in Shazam. It would have been a pleasant reunion for the two. Well, that marks the end of our video for today. We hope you enjoyed it. On your way out, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.